Hi there, uh, Momentum. You've maybe seen, th seen this meme before. Uh, it's a pretty good way to visualise Momentum actually. The duck tries to land, he tries to come to a stop really suddenly, but no, he's got too much momentum, it's hard for him to stop, and so he falls flat on his face. But in physics we like to define our quantities with equations rather than uh, statements or memes. So here's the equation for momentum that you're going to have to know about and be able to use. So you may be given some examples and be asked to make some calculations or maybe a, a comparison. So here we're going to compare three situations. We're going to use the equation to calculate the momentum firstly of a dog. So uh, write out the equation P equals M which is 1500, 1500 kilograms, the mass, times V, the velocity, 25 meters per second. Then reach for the calculator, 1500 times 25 gives me 37500, 30. 37,500 kilograms meters per second. And you need to remember that is the unit for momentum. It's quite a good unit really to remember and explain something that's happening in the equation because, well, kilograms was the unit of the mass, meters per second was the unit of the velocity, and so we just shoved them together, kilogram meters per second. Just like in algebra, they just push the things together, implying that they're multiplied together. So here's another vehicle then. Here's daffodil. Okay. Daffodil is traveling at the same velocity as a dog. So let's work out his momentum so we can make that comparison. So again, write out the equation with the values that we know in. M is 1,200, V is 25, now got it ready, reach for the calculator, 1200 0, 0, times 25 equals 30,000, 3 and then 4 zeros. And the unit, once more, you need to remember kilograms, meters per second. And then lastly, same car, this time daffodil, traveling slightly faster. This one traveling about 70 miles per hour. Same equation though, P is M times V. 1,200 is M. 35 is now V. So, go for the calculator. One two zero zero times thirty five equals four two zero 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 forty two thousand four two zero 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 kilograms meters per second. Okay, so we can say then that the hardest one to stop, if you like, the one with the highest momentum is daffodil and he's got forty two thousand kilograms meters per second. That's about what it is really, that's all you really need to know about momentum. But momentum does help us to understand some other situations. Now you may remember Newton's second law, which hopefully you do. Force is a mass times acceleration. Well that's, a, that's useful up until a point. Now when we talk about things like car safety, we need to understand force in a slightly different way. So let's take an equation that we understand and we know for acceleration and let's actually put these, um, this expression, acceleration is V minus U over T, into the equation for force. So instead of where A is here, we're going to actually put V minus U over T. So bear with me, let's copy down the bit we're not changing, F is M times all of this, uh, V minus U 
over t. Okay, there we go. Well, in maths, we wouldn't like to leave it like that. We like to expand that bracket. We want to get rid of that bracket. So really, m is multiplied by everything inside there. So again, let's copy down the bit so we're not changing. f equals. Now it's m times v, m v, minus, because there's that minus sign there, m times u. And then the, we don't multiply the t by the m. It's on the bottom line, so it stays on its own divided by time. Now this redefines force for us. It defines force as a change in momentum divided by time. It's the final momentum take away the initial momentum. Just to remind you, momentum, remember, is mass times velocity. So the final momentum, mass times velocity, take away the initial momentum, mass times velocity, the initial velocity divided by time. So a force is a rate of change of momentum. Change in momentum by time. Change in momentum, rate of. A force is a rate of change of momentum. And this is how car safety features work. Let's take this, what's going on here, is they're testing the crumple zone of the car. There's one at the front of the car, and one at the back of the car as well. They're testing the front. And what happens in a crumple zone is actually, literally, when the car crashes, the front crumples up like a concertina. And that takes slightly longer. That means that time is longer. T actually increases. Now, if you increase T down here, that means that overall this fraction is a smaller fraction. So the longer that the change in momentum happens, the lower the rate of change in momentum, and therefore the lower the force. So if we have in this situation, as similarly you do in seat belts, where something is designed to make a collision happen over a longer period of time, to make momentum be changed over a longer period of time, it means that you bring the forces down, and that makes the whole thing more safe.